Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. So while doing the four speed swap for my Willys Jeep, I realized there's not a lot of information out there on rebuilding these Ford T18s. In this video, I've put together a pretty solid tear down and rebuild video for the Ford T18. All right, so let's get into it. First step, we'll take the six bolts out of the shift cover. And we'll go ahead and get that out of the way. These come off with a 9 16th socket. Somehow or another, there's always that one bolt you just can't seem to get to. Now, as I go, I'm a big believer in labeling and bagging everything up. That way, when you go to put it all back together, it's real straightforward. You don't get nothing mixed up. First look at the gears. So far I'm not seeing anything too concerning. That's kind of normal, some rounding right there. I am noticing that the synchronizers are kind of discolored. They're not real brass looking. That might be a normal thing on these, but I'm used to seeing synchronizers that are real bright brass. All right, so next step, we gotta get this rear output off. So this is what drives your speedo cable. I'm kind of surprised it's plastic. There's a little snap ring right here holding it on, so we're gonna go ahead and get that off. These right here are the best snap ring pliers. I've used them a bunch, took a bunch of transmissions, transfer cases apart with them. Made in USA, they're Proto brand. I'll have them linked down in the description. I think I got these off Amazon, but they are totally worth the money. And when you're gonna be doing something like this, even just like a little T90 or something, you're gonna want a pair of these. This right here is the front bearing retainer. We got four bolts in it. We'll go ahead and take that off. So this right here is gonna be your front input bearing. You can see there's a snap ring there and there's also a snap ring right here behind it that clips onto the bearing. It's similar thing on the output. So the next thing we need to do is get this bearing pulled off this shaft. This is pressed on. Get that snap ring, come in behind here with a brass drift. See if we can knock it out just a little bit, and then I've got a bearing puller we're gonna put on it. See if we can get that thing to come off. Now I'm gonna take a brass punch. You wanna use brass, don't use steel on steel. That's how you break and damage things. I'm gonna come in behind that bearing right there and see if I can tap it forward enough to get that puller on it. this little kit off Amazon. It's pretty cheap. Comes with two different size pullers. There's this smaller jaw, this bigger jaw. These are all your standoffs. The studs it comes with though for the bigger jaw are not nearly long enough to pull that bearing off. I went to Lowe's and got some half inch 13 all thread or you could use like an eight inch bolt. But I think at the time this was actually cheaper than buying two eight inch bolts.
Well, that went pretty smooth. I've already got the bearing in a bag. There is this little washer that goes behind it. I'm not exactly sure what the purpose is, if it's a shim or what have you. There is a slight difference in the front and back. I always like to take a picture or video exactly how it comes off. That way, when I put it back on, it'll be exactly the way it was. So this looks like the raised part goes to the front and the recessed part goes to the back. Before we can get this input shaft out, and this is full of a bunch of little needle bearings. When you pull that out, they're all gonna fall out. I've gotta do the same thing back here. I gotta get that snap ring, pull this bearing off, and then this whole cluster of gears should come off first and then the input second. Okay, so in order for all this to come out, to get past this little reverse shifter fork deal, this right here has to be slid all the way up as far as it can go in order to clear that. That was a little bit of work to get all this out to kind of get it just right where it'd come up out of here. One other thing I did, this counter shaft right here that holds this bottom cluster gear, I went ahead and drove it out. I didn't film it, but all you do, there's a little tab here. This tab right here, it's got one bolt in it that holds it on right there and that holds them two counter shafts in there. This will be for your reverse gear and this is for that cluster gear. You drive these this way towards where the locking tab is at. If you try to knock it out this way, this is a press fit hole. It's going to bind up or you might even end up cracking your case. Since I've already got this shaft knocked out, the cluster gear should go ahead and lift out too. So the last thing we got down in here is that reverse gear. Of course, the reverse shift fork that moves that back and forth. I did notice that magnet down in there. It's got a bunch of little chips on it, a bunch of little shavings. It even looks like some little chunks of metal. And then there's a bunch of little roller bearings I dumped out when I was getting all that stuff out. That's no big deal. Honestly, I didn't see anything bad on the gears, but we'll inspect them a little bit better once we get everything cleaned up. So to get this counter shaft out, I put two extensions together. This is a broken extension. And I know I said don't use steel on steel. I've never been able to get these shafts out with brass. You always end up just mushrooming it or bending your punch. These are really hard too, so if you get it good and square, you shouldn't have any problem getting it out. Now to get to this one, you've really got to come in through your input bearing hole right here and kind of snake it around and hit it from right there. It's kind of hard to do. That's how I've done it in the past. I don't know if they actually make something to stick down in there and push it out. I'm gonna try and get that shaft knocked out though, and then we'll be done tearing this case apart. All right, so before I start throwing gears back in this case, there's a few things you need to know when you're ordering your rebuild kit. First off is your front and rear output bearings. So these are the ones that come out of this case and you can see one is shorter than the other. This be in your front, this be in your rear. So they used a 20 and a 23 millimeter front input bearing. So when you're ordering your kit, make sure you've got the correct bearing for your input shaft. Now in my case, the stock input shaft that come out of the case and the Jeep when I had modified used the same 20 millimeter bearing. But what they don't share is the synchronizer cone size. So this is an earlier style. I think Ford used it 65 to 67. This is what they call a small cone and this would be like a late cone, I think is what they call it. You can see the difference in size here though, that changes the size of your synchronizer. Now I do have some part numbers for that and I'll throw them up here for y'all. 
Something Novak notes in the rebuild guide is this hole right here, which was part of your original Baron retainer. It has a recess behind it, cast behind it. All of them went in that way. Some of them go actually straight into the case. If that hole goes straight into the case, that has to be plugged. Now in my case, it doesn't. But I did go ahead and plug these three. Even though the transfer case adapter plate does cover that, it's not like right on the gasket. It's kind of in a weird spot. The last thing to mention before we get into this rebuild is my reverse gear actually has like a bronze bushing in it. It looks to be in really good shape. It feels good on the shaft. It's not worn out. But most of the rebuild guides you look at shows it having a bunch of needle bearings in there and a spacer. I think this must be an earlier model transmission because it's got a few little quirks about it. All right, with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and start throwing gears in this thing. Now with this style of case, the boss that this arm here pivots on to move this gear back and forth is pressed in. And later styles, I believe it threads in and then there's like an E-clip right here or something that holds it in. In my case though, the arm has to go back in first and then I'll stick the gear in. Okay, now with that shift arm and that reverse gear in, we can go ahead and drop the counter shaft in. Your rebuild kit will come with one of these little locking tabs right here. These are what holds these counter shafts in. Once you drive them in there, that's what this tap toll is for. So when you drive these counter shafts in, you need to make sure that they're rotated in such a way that you can catch these little recesses right here where it lines up good with everything. So that right there looks about right to line up with this one and to line up good with that hole. Now I didn't drive this counter shaft all the way in just yet. I left a little bit out there. Once I get this cluster gear one in, we'll put this tab on, start the bolt, and then we'll drive them in at the same time. That way everything seats right. You can see this back in here now though, and everything works like it should. This has that little pivot tab piece on the bottom, sticks in right there. So now I'm gonna move on to that big cluster gear. All right, so this right here is what you call your cluster gear. This sits down at the bottom of the case. You can see on the exploded view right here, it's got several little roller bearings in it, and that's also gonna have a couple thrust washers on one end, thrust washer on this end, and then there's a spacer sleeve that goes right in the middle of it. So in your rebuild kit, you'll have a pack that's full of these little spacer washers right here. We're gonna need six of them for this cluster gear. Here's them thrust washers I was talking about. And then here is all them new little needle bearings we're gonna be putting inside of this thing. I went ahead and got one row of these needle bearings started in there. You can kind of see it up in there. Let's see if I can get a light on that here in a minute. What you're gonna do though, you're gonna have all these little needle bearings and get you a tub of this assembly goo right here. This is made just for putting automatic and manual transmissions together. Some people use grease, but the thing with grease and the difference with this stuff is when it gets up to operating temperatures, it dissolves, whereas grease can actually end up starving components. It won't break down quick enough. You can actually burn up your freshly rebuilt transmission because it's full of grease. Let's look at the exploded view real quick. So you can see that in between these rows of needle bearings is them little spacer washers. That's in that rebuild kit right here. So, and then that spacer sleeve I showed y'all, that sits in the middle of this cluster gear. So you're gonna put the sleeve in the middle and then you're gonna put one of them little spacer washers. That's what I've got right now. The sleeves in there, a spacer washer, and then this row of needle bearings. I kind of pushed it towards this end of the cluster gear. It'll probably push in a little bit more when we get done with it. I'm gonna go ahead and do this next row. Let me show y'all how that works. Right, so the first thing I need to do is put another one of these spacer washers in there. I'll go ahead and put a little bit of this assembly lube on it. What's nice is you really can't use too much of this stuff because it breaks down quick and it lubricates all the components. Now, start packing the needle bearings in there. I'll just dip it in this assembly goo, get a good coating on there, and just slide it into the bottom. Another good idea, just go ahead and get some of this and smear it around the inside. That'll help it stick better. I didn't degrease any of this. I left the oil on it. I did clean it up a little, just wiping it down. You don't really wanna take all the oil off these parts because if you do, they will start rusting. It's just raw metal. 
You just put a little goo on it and stick it in and repeat. And I'll just work my way around this thing. So that's got this side all loaded up. I've got all them bearings in there and you'll be able to know when you've got them all in there, there won't be any space. It'll be a good tight fit between all of them. We'll put one more of these little spacer rings on here. Maybe a little bit more lube to just make sure that don't come out. All right, now I'll just spin it around and do the same thing on the other side. All right, so before I can put that cluster gear in, I still need to do those two thrust washers. Actually, there's three of them. If you look at the exploded view, we'll have the bigger one with the bent end tab going to the front of the transmission. You can see I've got it right there. Use a decent amount of the assembly goo and it'll just stick there. On this side, I've not installed these yet. There's this one. You can see it's got a little tab down here that keys in right down there. I've just smeared it with some assembly goo. And then this one goes on top of that one. I don't believe there's any front or back or anything to it. I'll put some assembly goo on this too. Two more little tricks before we drop this cluster gear in, because this is a point where you can knock all them needle bearings loose and then you gotta start over and repack all that. It'd be really aggravating. On the countershaft side, I've got that countershaft just started in there and it's flush with them thrust washers, so it's holding them up for me. On this side, I've got a three quarter inch socket. I put a little tape around it to make it a little tighter in that hole. It's doing the same thing. It's gonna hold that thrust washer up for me. So as I set this down in there, hopefully those stay where they're at because it is just that assembly goo. So it'll be pretty easy to push it down. Make sure you got this tab where it's supposed to be at. It should be pretty close. It's hard to tell this far out. All right, here we go. So that went pretty smooth. Got knocked all the way in here. Locking tab's nice and flush. I've got these set good and tighten this bolt up. Make sure you seat the locking tab by driving in the counter shafts. Don't try and pull it in with the bolt. But now's the moment of truth. Everything felt right. It seemed like it all went together good. We'll see how this feels. I don't hear anything weird, any grinding or anything. Got our little reverse idle gear here. That seems to be working okay. All right, good deal. I just got everything took care of in the bottom of this case. I'll probably take this off the bench for a minute and now I'm gonna swap over to that main shaft. Y'all know I started with a two wheel drive Ford T18 transmission. So this is a two wheel drive main shaft. Of course, I left all the gears, synchronizers, everything on it as is, as I pulled it out. It's just a lot easier to keep everything organized this way. Now this main shaft right here in front of it, this I got from Novak. It's part of their Dane 18 to T18 conversion kit. Now, I didn't buy the whole kit because I did find that stock Jeep adapter. You can see the differences in this though. Like from here back, it's really the same. And then once we get out here, this is the portion that goes in our transfer case. It's got the six splines on it. 
the threaded portion for our nut to go on. So the next part of this job is gonna be transferring all this stuff in this exact order over to this main shaft. Now, of course, there's a snap ring on here. We're gonna have to deal with that first. And then I believe the whole synchronizer hub and probably third gear also should slide off. All this stuff come off pretty easy. What much of a fight. I think I'm gonna start in reverse order of how I took this stuff off. I'll go ahead and put this stuff back on. Of course, I've got new synchronizers to go in here. And then I do have to assemble the new synchronizer hub for the second and third gear. So when I get to this end of the shaft, we'll go through all that, swap on the new third gear I've got over there, and then I'll have this main shaft built. Okay, so once you put this gear back on, there is a place for a snap ring right here. And I went ahead and put it back on. I don't really see the point, what it really does. Well, I took the other main shaft apart. There was this little like thrust washer deal that sat back over here up against the snap ring. That's what that little cutout's for. It looks like Novak shaft just has that built in and it seats up against that right there. But now that I got that snap ring on, should be able to just put this whole assembly back on top of this. And you can see right here, that spacing works out just perfect. Right there is where that snap ring goes at. All right, so nothing too crazy so far. This thing's pretty much putting itself back together. All this turned out really good. That snap ring is perfect. Everything feels good. The synchronizer shifting good. This gear right here, there's no slop in it. It feels great. So now we can put this side of the shaft back together. I'll go ahead and put some of that assembly goo inside of this because this is in the top part of the case. So it might not get all quite as fast as everything on the bottom wheel. All right. So here is the new synchronizer hub. One thing important to note right here is that everything probably will have a front and a back on it. See, if you can see that chamfer around the edge of that compared to the chamfer around right here, if you compare that to this old one, so third gears right there, it'd go on just like that. So they've got that big chamfer, this right here, point to the front of the transmission. So this should be the front of the synchronizer hub. Now, if you look down inside this old one here, you see that snap ring, and then there's some little dogs or paws or whatever you want to call them. The rebuild manual calls them like shifting plates or something. And those kind of are a detent for the synchronizer hub. But this new one, it didn't come in put together already. So we got a couple new springs here. We got those three little shifting plates. And we'll go ahead and put all this together and then we can slide it up on that shaft. This little recess portion goes to the inside and this little hump is gonna go to the outside. All 
I think usually, I don't know if the repair manual says this or not. I think you want these springs opposite each other. I don't know if it really matters that much, but we'll do it anyways. So this one should probably go like this right here. And there you go. Now we've got our little synchronizer hub here put together. Got two brand new synchronizers. Like I said, these are the small cone. And this, with a small chamfer, that's the back of it. This synchronizer hub gave me a little bit of trouble getting it on there. Something about getting past the splines right there where that snap ring groove is, it just didn't want to go past them. So I ended up taking a file to them and kind of cleaning up some little burrs. There's even a little bit of like grit or something in some of them splines, so I cleaned it up real good. It was still pretty tight though. I actually ended up taking my brass punch here, kind of walking it in. So it's not like pressed on tight, but I don't think you could pull it off by hand. For a minute, I thought it was this new synchronizer hub, so I took it off, took the old one, tried to slide it on, same issue. It's almost like something in these splines or maybe the OD or something is just a little bit too snug. There's one more thing I got to do before I can drop this thing back in the case. Now, when you get done loading up that cluster gear, you should have some of these needle bearings left. The rest of these are going to go into this input shaft. I'm kind of disappointed that rebuild kit I bought because it only came with six of these little spacers here. You need seven because one goes right here to keep these bearings in. But when you buy a kit, you expect to get all the pieces you need to do a full rebuild. This will be the same process as that cluster gear. We're gonna get some of this assembly goo here and one needle bearing at a time. We'll get some on there, get good and sticky, and then just stick it up in there. The input shaft only gets one of these spacers on the outside. You don't have to put one on the inside. And just to confirm, we'll look at the exploded view and you can see right there is that little spacer washer that lines up with our input. And then we flip over. Number one is called main shaft pilot bearing roller spacer. Last thing to do is put that little spacer on there. Maybe put a little bit more on the inside too, just to make sure everything is nice and sticky. Now I took all this apart, you'll remember, I had to get this whole main shaft assembly out of the way before the input shaft would come out. So the input shaft needs to be the first thing that goes in, but I'm gonna have to be careful with it because I've still got all them loose needle bearings in there. I don't wanna knock any of those loose. And what's gonna be so easy to mess up is knocking some of them needle bearings loose down here in this input shaft. That's why I said use a ton of that assembly lube. I gotta be really careful. I got my synchronizer down in there, still on the hub, so all that looks good. I just gotta be really careful working this main shaft into this input shaft. Right, so I got everything in the case now. All the gears are lining up good. That synchronizer lined up good with that input shaft. I'm not worried about any of that. Everything feels good. I still need to put my front and my rear bearing in. And of course I'll have the bearing retainer and that adapter plate. That'll have this whole case situated. I'm gonna go ahead and grab them new bearings and then I'll kind of tap them in here. Then we'll take them over to the press and press them in. Don't forget, different cases have different bearings. This one has the 20 up front and the 23 in the rear. Later ones are just gonna have the same bearing front and rear. 
Also, don't forget this little washer looking thing. This is actually something to do with oil in your bearing, I believe, or some kind of oil slinger. This is an important piece and it goes on behind the bearing. So I just went and watched the teardown video just to double check. The raised part goes to the front, the recessed part goes to the back. And then of course, you're gonna have to put these snap rings on I already did. That's what kind of sets the depth of this against the case. This right here might be the new hardest part of this rebuild is just getting this thing stood up inside your shop press. So I started them bearings in with uh, my little brass punch and my brass hammer. I got them kind of started on each shaft here. Now there is still enough play. I think this could come out and we could drop them bearings. So we still gotta be careful about them needle bearings. Also, I gotta make sure everything in here is still lined up right. You don't want a gear pressing down on top of a gear when we're trying to force this bearing up onto this shaft right here. Just gonna go slow, take my time, make sure everything feels good. We'll see what happens. Okay, so the bearing looks like it's seated in the case now. You can still see I've got a little bit of a gap here. I need to close that gap up and finish pressing that shaft in that bearing. All right, now that I got that bearing seated on that shaft, flip the transmission over and I'll do this input bearing. And I'll about have this thing wrapped up. I got this thing back over here on the bench. I went ahead and threw the transfer case adapter plate on. And then I got this front bearing retainer piece on. I talked about these in part two in that adapter video. As far as I can tell though, everything went together just right. All the synchronizers seem to be seated good. The bearings seem to be seated good. Where everything's sitting right now, this should be neutral. So if I hold this shaft right here and rotate this one, everything feels really good. Now that assembly glue I used is very high tack, so there's some drag to it, but you can tell it's just the assembly lube. It's not anything with the gears or anything. I did pour a little bit of this gear oil on some stuff in here that didn't have any of that assembly lube on it, just to make sure I wasn't running nothing dry, but everything feels really good. One more thing I wanna do is throw the shift tower on real quick and check the gears. All right, that should be first year. Second. It's reverse. It's fourth gear. That should be third gear. And then back to neutral. Well, y'all, that's about all there is to it. It's not a terrible rebuild. The worst parts for me is probably the snap rings and putting that thing up in that press and pressing those bearings on. Now I still have to seal everything up. Got to put all the gaskets on and any holes that go into the case, those are gonna need thread sealer on them. If you got any comments, questions, or concerns, comment down below or hit me up over at Instagram at 7 Bar Salvage. I really appreciate y'all checking out this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time.